I discovered the fastest possible way to learn information two years ago today. No exaggeration, it allowed me to study less than 30 minutes a day and score in the top 10. 20% throughout medical school. But the part that no one really knew about is that it came from the worst days in my degree. I was in my third year. The amount we had to learn had nearly tripled overnight. Every week felt heavier, more content, more pressure, more things that I was just magically supposed to know. And one day, it all just slapped me across the face. I was sitting in the library, 10 p.m. I still had half a video to make, so behind with all my studying, had ward rounds the next day at 8 a.m. And I was getting every single stupid question wrong, not remembering a single topic I studied a week ago. Honestly, I was so pissed. I was genuinely angry at myself. Despite being some study guru online, how did I not know my crap? How did I not remember what I studied? Was I stupid? Was I a fraud? No. The simple truth was that I was still only learning at the service. So that night out of frustration, I grabbed my iPad and realized I need to go deeper with this topic. I broke it all down to scratch and just started writing the main keywords down across the page. I started linking them together with arrows, drew a simple diagram in there, and slowly things started to fit a bit better. No details by the way, just the skeleton of the topic of how I had explained to my brother drawn out all in front of me. And then something strange happened. I immediately started to notice different things within the topic that I'd never seen while I was reading. Huh, these two diseases are treated the exact same way. This one is caused by this bacteria, this one is caused by this thing, but they're investigated slightly differently. Okay. For the first time, these difficult topics that I was studying suddenly started to make way more sense. Not because I memorized them, not because I spent hours on it, it's because I could finally actually see how all of these different concepts worked in my head. And the craziest part was that it all actually stuck. Hours later, the next day too, and months down the line, I could easily explain them without having revised once. That messy 15 minute drawing was the first ever mind map I made and so I continued to improve this skill to improve my skill of making mind maps with multiple topics until I realized something very interesting. When I was learning using mind maps, I was using the exact same three steps completely without planning it every single time. The very first step before I even started was always to get the big picture overview of the topic so I knew what my mind map would look like. This literally just meant taking 15 minutes and skim reading all of the important information that I had to read. Only focusing on the basics, literally setting a timer if I had to, and forcing myself to only read number one, the definition, what the topic actually was, number two, the headings, how the chapter was laid out, and number three, understand what the general gist of the chapter is going to be about. Watch a quick video about it. And most importantly, ignore all of the complicated details and sentences that you are definitely going to get stuck on. This 15 minutes was me priming my brain, getting it ready, getting it acquainted with the topic before I dove in deeper and read more. And at this stage, I am already, while I'm reading through the topics, already thinking about what is my mind map going to look like. And side by side, as you notice, I also started to write down these basics and keywords of these topics as I was reading. Again, not huge paragraph notes, just the key concepts that I put into headings, subheadings, and keywords. Because these different concepts are going to be the skeleton of my mind map. They, they are the things that will go on the mind map. So think of the keywords that you're noting down like pieces of the puzzle and the puzzle being that final mind map that you'll make. And yes, note taking goes against everything I preach, but the reason I did this is because a mind map isn't just random lines and a bubble in the middle. It is a visual representation for how the entire topic works in your head. It is the skeletal structure so I can actually picture the entire topic in my head rather than having to memorize random pieces of information that I would if I had to just read the entire chapter. And for the whole process of learning, honestly, I recommend RevNote because as you saw, it lets me number one, convert all of the notes I'm making as I'm studying into flashcards automatically. It's super convenient, honestly, because I don't want to be taking out any extra time to create flashcards any more than you do. So doing this and getting them out of the way efficiently makes far more sense. It's very simple to make them as well. You just put two equal two signs between the question and then you type out the answer and then boom, the flashcard gets shoved into the space repetition algorithm and you can practice them on there. Download it using the link in my description. You'll get free unlimited flashcards and notes anyways. Enjoy. And now that I had all these keywords in front of me, yes, I started to plan my mind map out a bit more, but the real reason I never was able to learn anything properly before became so obvious. Whenever I study normally, each bit of information I was reading, each thing I did was learned separately. A list of symptoms, of some cause, a random fact that my friend told me that I remember because it sounds funny. The information was isolated, just floating around in my head with no real 
structure. So of course nothing was sticking. But because my goal wasn't just to memorize the information anymore, it was to create the best mind map of the topic possible. All I needed to do, all I actually had to do from the, that keyword step was think. What is my mind map going to look like? what goes in the center, and how can I build around it? And as soon as I started to ask those questions, my brain was forced to do something that it had never done before. To relate information, to compare between the topics that I was learning about, to create links up here. And yes, this was all amazing, but practically the way you would do this is you would sit down, find and write down all of the similarities and differences between the topics while you're learning and reading. So while you're reading, find the similarities, differences, write them down. Do the diseases have different causes? Have the same sort of effect? Are they treated the same way? Is this pathophysiology part of the same process as the other one? I'm gonna put up all of the lenses that I use to think about while I compare between topics. Literally, I'll put a big list of them. It'll apply to most of your subjects. And by the way, I continue throughout this process to create higher order flashcards. Not just flashcards that ask, what is this? How is this? We've already done that. These are higher order flashcards that ask more comparative questions. Ask questions about how this relates to the other. If this effect happens, then what happens to this? I find that creating questions about the sort of links and relations you're learning about really helps you understand them better and also is useful for your recall later on. And because on Remno, you can actually draw stuff out. If you notice, I, while I was making those notes, I even started drawing out example flowcharts and example diagrams of how the concepts that I'm learning about would relate. And that's another big reason that Remno is the goat. You can draw out entire, not even those flowcharts, but entire mind maps on there underneath your notes. Your flashcards are there, your notes are there, your mind maps are there. Everything is just in one place. It is the all-in-one place for your entire studying process. But what was wild here was that just looking at these relations that I was writing down gave my brain patterns. While I was reading something for the first time, I started to understand things straight away then and there. Just because I was writing down a few comparisons instead of blindly reading the topic without any aim. And that's when the next problem hit. I had the keywords, I thought about the relationships between those keywords, between the main concepts, but it was all just words on a page right now. I was definitely feeling my understanding improve, but I knew myself. Honestly, if I didn't lock this in now, I knew I'd forget it tomorrow. So I asked myself one final question. If I had to explain this topic to my brother in less than 30 seconds in the simplest way possible, how would I do it? And without planning any of it, I remember drawing a diagram of the heart, showing how all five conditions would fit on it. I would split it in half, show the progression of each of the diseases around it. And that would be the central idea of the mind map, the simplest explanation of all of the topics that you've just learned. This would be the backbone for how I think about these topics, not just for my exams, but forever throughout my time as a doctor with all of my patients. And then once I have a general central idea, what I do is I'd add all of the relations that we wrote down around this backbone. So if I wrote down this condition affects you the same way this does, I would draw a similarity between them. I would then differentiate between them visually on the map as well. I try and make it into visual, different visual flowcharts. I would add a table in there if, if, if I needed. Yes, I know this is a hard skill. It'll take time to get better at. I've made plenty of live full videos where I show you how I do it with actual big topics. I'll link them up here. But drawing this mind map out, figuring out where things are going was forcing me to think about how I would arrange the concepts that I'm learning about in my head. How would they link? Just a general tip, I would always start with big ideas first. That central diagram needs to be the first thing you put on there and then you expand outwards into the different topics. See how they relate together, see how they link together and, and visually show those links. Make it 90% visual. Delete as much text as you possibly can from the mind map because you won't remember it. Honestly, I don't. I never remember the text that I've written down but I remember the diagrams I draw. I remember the tables I draw. I remember the comparisons I make. I'll put up my most value tips to create these mind maps in the most memorable way possible here. And honestly, I get asked a lot about how do I recall this mind map? Should I redraw the whole thing? How do I remember it? My advice is firstly, it is an extremely intuitive process. This process of making the mind map will allow you to remember more than you ever have before. However, to extra solidify important parts of the mind map that you want to remember, please make flashcards of it on Remnote. You can do it right on the app. You can literally image occlude the mind map then and there. And the reason I've changed my mind on this over time is because each 
part of the mind map that you kind of image occlude, that you then recall in a flashcard later, contains one or two visual images, but those visual images represent like seven to 10 different facts, which is far more useful than you doing single answer flashcards, isn't it? And also it forces you to remember how you kind of made that mind map, how you kind of structured it all in the first place. I've honestly found it to be very invaluable just so that when you're making those flashcards, it comes out in your rotation here and there and you think, oh, that's the mind map I made about this. What was this part in that mind map? Very useful. But as I finished up, as I finished up those hard drawings, I realized within 20 minutes, I had something on the page. I remember sitting back and, and looking at it. It felt so strange at the time because I stopped thinking about all the keywords and the information that I had to memorize for this topic. Because I made this structured drawing of the entire thing, I finally had a way of picturing it in my brain. I was so shocked by how much all of it made sense. Not as separate diseases, but as one picture organized. I remember being able to close the textbook and being able to recall the entire topic just from the mind map in less than a few minutes. I literally could start with the center of the mind map and fly all around it, trying to remember it. And even in that process of remembering, remembering so much information just from how I related all of the different concepts together. I immediately knew from that first time I did, I did the mind map, it wasn't a thing of, oh, this may work. I, I knew that there was something there. I hadn't just started doing some random drawing technique. I'd found the way of learning. And after that, the more I made over the years, the faster and better I got with each. And all it is, is just priming, relating, and organizing the three steps, which later became the pro mind mapping method. I've linked an absolutely free PDF down below with the full details of the method, each and every single step broken down all the commonly asked questions on that PDF given to you. And honestly, it is free. So click the link in the, in the description, enter your email, and I will hand deliver the mind map PDF to you in a few moments. And if you haven't already, go and download Remnote because it is the all-in-one studying system. It has everything you need. It's nice to use. I don't know what else you want. Try it out. Click the link in my description. Start using it for free. Start mind mapping if you haven't already. If you're just watching this for the fun of it, please start actually mind mapping for your topics. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, do the usual stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.